Auzubillahiminashaitanirajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin, sayyidina wa nabiyina wa habibina wa maulana, Muhammadin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa salam, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi, wa manita dabi huddahu ila yaumiddin. Wa ina azdakan hadithi kitabun la, wa khairan hadhi, hadhi yu Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa salam, wa shara al-umuri mhudathatuha, wa kula mhudathatin bidi'a, wa kula bidi'a dalala, wa kula dalalati finnaq. Rabbi shra li sarri wa yasri li amri, wa hululu kudeta min lisani yafkahu kawli. Rabbi la tu akhizni mi ma yakulun, wa kfili ma la yalemun, wa janli khairan mi ma yazunun. Amo bai. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhum. Welcome to the House of Dua, the platform from which you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about his creation, about his message, about his messenger, and of course about his chosen religion of Al-Islam. Welcome to the channel from which you learn how to succeed in the world we live today and how to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of accountability for even greater success. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, I'm sure you have received or seen, just as I have done, the provocative and disturbing news from certain parts of the world. News about the reported burning of the Quran by those who claim to be haters of Muslims and Islam and those who hate the Holy Book of Allah known as Al-Quran, the last testament sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the entire mankind to the straight path. There are those who claim they have justification to express themselves, and the best way for them to express themselves is to burn the Quran. What a perverted mind. What a person in darkness. What a backward individual or groups what a crazy set of ideas run through the minds of such people. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, it's indeed provocative. It is disturbing. It's insulting, to say the least. But we are better than that. When they go low, we go high. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as Muslims. He declared. You are the best that Allah has created out of humanity. You who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the example of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and accept the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has continuously sent to mankind. You are the best of Allah's creation. Because you invite to doing that which is good and prevent that which is wrong and evil. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, yes, in the last few weeks, the news of the time had been the reported burning of the Holy Quran. I want to ask you a question. Do you think that any sincere Christian or Jew or Hindu or any other believer in a religion would condescend to the level of burning a revealed book? Do you think so? I don't think so. That reminds me, therefore, that those who are engaged in this are of perverted minds. They are backward. They are in the darkness. They need cure, actually. They are sick. That's why we need to look at it very closely. I know that when it happens like this, many of us tend to be provoked. Many of us tend to react instantaneously in different ways. But let's caution ourselves. Before we come to that, let me remind you and remind myself that there are certain countries in the world today where these things are happening, and such countries are either complicit or they tolerate, or at times they encourage the doing of this evil stuff. We will not be ashamed to mention such countries. In fact, 
They are countries that can be described as religiously failed nations, morally bankrupt nations. They may be rich materialistically in the world we live, but down there in their heart, there's emptiness because they have strayed away from the reason for which the last ban of water Allah brought them into existence. Countries like Denmark, like Sweden, like the Netherlands, like France, like the United States of America, just to mention a few. All in the name of freedom of speech, they stay aloof, indifferent, unconcerned, and in some cases, tacitly supporting these ideas, these evil activities. You know what? They think that we don't know. Indeed, we are watching. Every action has a consequence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has reviewed this book, is watching. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, we advise such nations to take appropriate action to nip this evil at the board before it gets out of hand. Enough is enough. Today, we want to remind ourselves that things like this are not new. The Quran is replete with information about what has happened in the past. And even in recent history, we have seen stuff like this. But we should be more mature in the way we respond to them. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, consider the lives of the Ambiya of Allah, the prophets and messengers sent to mankind with the same message, Allah Tabudu Elela. The same message that you should worship no other one except Allah. How did the people to whom they were sent receive them? Indignations, torture, rejection, abuse, stigmatization, attempt at their lives. Prophet Ibrahim was thrown into fire. Why? Because he was inviting to that which is good and calling against that which is wrong. Prophet Nuh was called a majnoon, a crazy man. Prophet Hood was called a foolish person. Prophet Saleh was called a hopeless child. They told him that they were thinking that he was going to be a leader of the people. But he had turned around to become a caller to the way of Allah. Prophet Shuaib was called the man who talks too much. These are the Ambiya of Allah, even before the coming of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Not to talk of what happened to Prophet Musa alayhi sallam and Prophet Isa alayhi sallam, Jesus Christ. What did they do wrong? Nothing. Simply because they are proclaiming the same message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, to proclaim to mankind by the revelation of this book. There are those who do not want to hear about it, but whether they like it or not, they will hear about it, and they will live with it. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is Allah who has sent down his messenger with this book, with the religion of truth known as Al-Islam, so that the religion will stand out clear from other claims on the planet, from many other religions on the planet, whether the idol worshippers like it or not, and whether those who disbelieve like it or not. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, the burning of the Quran does not remove an inch from Islam. You know what? There are over 10 times the number of people who memorize this Quran than the copies of the Quran on the planet. It's not only in the book form. It's right there. That's how the preservation started. So whoever thinks that by burning the Quran, he's doing a disservice to Islam, actually that person is doing a disservice to himself. It's good for us to understand this. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al hijab chapter 15 of the Quran, it is we, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking, it is we who have revealed the zikra, the reminder. It's also known as the reminder. Al-Kitab. 
Zalika le kita abula re bafi Oda e monteke Alasbana otala say we have revealed it and indeed we are the one who will protect it. Yes, Alasbana otala this is his thing. Whether you like it or not, it has come to be. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. It will be there long after you are gone. There are other incidents in history that remind us that those who stand against the will of Allah will have themselves to blame at the end. Why the message of Allah will survive. Are you aware of the story of Asahab al that is reported in Surah al buruj There was a powerful king who didn't want to see the truth about the din of Allah. And so, decided to execute all the Muslims of the time, thinking that he was doing himself a favor. But at the end of the day, it was he who paid the price why Islam survived. Fra'an Lanetulai Ale pursued Musa to the side of the Red Sea. At the end of the day, he paid with his life. Ibrahim alayhi salam, as I stated, was thrown into fire. At the end of the day, he came out unstated. Nuhu alayhi salam was told he was a majnoon, but he laughed last. You can go on naming them. Even before the coming of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi salam. Have you heard of a man known as Musa al-Khazar, who tried to forge an alternative Quran similar to this? At the end of the day, he rendered himself a laughing stock. Have you heard of Abu Jaha, Amr Hisham, who waged war after war against the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa in order to extinguish the light of Allah? At the end of the day, he paid with his life. Have you heard of Abu Lahab, the uncle to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa whose preoccupation in the time of the Prophet was either to kill the Prophet or to stop the message. But at the end of the day, he paid with his life. Those who stand in the way of Allah, Allah says, Let's take a feeling Arabi. Omakara say ye. Ola ye kulumakaru say ye on e la bi ahali sura fatu. They move about arrogantly on the planet, doing evil, spreading falsehood, thinking that no one will do them anything. Plotting day and night against Islam. But they indeed actually are plotting against themselves because the plot, the plot will coil around them. That has always been the case. I'm saying this because there are many of us who, at the face of it, would like to be provoked into action, would like to retaliate. I'm trying to caution you against such action because by so doing, you're actually giving oxygen to the evil activities of these people. Don't forget that the entire mankind is full of umiyun, illiterate, inert zombies who do not reason before they come to a conclusion. So when you take action to retaliate, nobody will ask why you are doing what you are doing, but it is your action that becomes visible to such people for criticisms. And when they criticize you, they criticize Islam. We must not fall to their cheap propaganda. It's important for us to. Understand that this is not new. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forewarned us in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran. It says, La tubu la wu na fi amu wa alikum wa anfusikum. Ola atasma un na mina lezi na utul kita aba mi kablikum wa mina lezi na shiraku aza kathira wa intas biru wa tataku. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam was warned, and by implication, we were all warned by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that definitely, definitely, you will be tested. Out of your worth and your own selves, you will be tested. And not only that, you are likely to come across those to whom the earlier revelations were sent and they rejected it. And those who are idol worshippers, among them, you will find some who will cause you some grievance as a result of their behavior. They will stigmatize you. They will cause you anger. They will make you unhappy. They will criticize your religion. But Allah says, if only you are patient and trust in Allah, 
That is your key to victory against them. Be patient and stay with the message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to you. That's why Allah continuously told the Prophet, Fast taken kama umrita. Stay steady with the message that we have sent to you upon. Do not deviate. And again, in Surah al maidah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laya duruku ma dolla ezata de tu. Ele la hi marju kun jemeya. Payuna biu kun bima kun tu ta malo. Those who have gone astray cannot mislead you if you stay straight with the message of Allah. If you hold on to the Quran. Remember, all of you are coming back to Allah and we hold you accountable. At the moment, when these people are doing things like this, your own immediate question will be, where is Allah? Why did Allah not take them out? Why did Allah not inflict punishment on them right away? Allah says, Those who are doing evil should not think that Allah's ban of what Allah is absent is not seeing them. They should not think so. Actually, Allah is seeing them and recording them. And actually, He wants their cup to be filled with the evil that they are doing. So that on the day when their eyeballs shall bulge out of the eye pots, they will know that what they have done is wrong. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, let's not be provoked into reacting unnecessarily to those who are born in the Quran. As I've stated, the Quran is not just in pages. The Quran is in our heads. This is the only religion on the planet whose adherence, every member of Islamic faith has a portion, one or two or more of the Quran in his or her brain. Then think about it. Out of two point something billion Muslims on the planet, think of how many people have a portion, one or more, or the entire Quran in their brain. One of the physical copies of the Quran, therefore, does not take the Quran out of existence. I tell you one thing. Do you know how fast Islam is spreading into this world? Do you know why? Those who want to quench the light of Allah, they go on attacking Muslim countries, thereby compelling some Muslims to leave their countries to settle in the non-Muslim countries. And guess what? Whenever a Muslim travels, he may not be able to go along with his television, with his bed, or with his car, or with his home. The first belonging a Muslim travels with when he's leaving his place of birth is his faith. That's why you see the streets and the nooks and corners of the developed world, the Western world, are now filled up with massage. Go to London, go to Germany, come to the United States of America, go to Japan, go to Spain, go to Italy. Islam is growing in leaps and bounds. Why? Because Muslims are moving to the non-Muslim countries for settlement, and they go with the religion. So, the plot they thought they were plotting against Islam has coiled around them. Yes. Who do you blame for it? Each time people want to hurt Islam, they hurt themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, when they tried to slander his wife, Do not think it's a harm they are doing to you. Actually, it is better for you. Yes. What they thought was meant to harm Islam is now turning against them. It's now an opportunity for Islam to grow across the world. And they don't like it. Who is to blame? It's a very important issue that I want all of us to pay attention to. Because what these people are doing, people who just want to turn themselves into celebrities overnight, they want to catch headlines in the mainstream media. And they know that if the law catches up with them, they can easily raise money from innocent people on the street. They are the ones doing all this just to make money, just to make fame, just to make name. That's what they are trying to do, trying to extinguish the light of Allah. Allah's banner, what Allah says in Surah Saf, Oman al Lamu, Neman Eftar Allah, 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 Sometimes 
similar verse in Surah Tawbah. Who is more wrong than the one who forges against Allah's ban on water Allah? Who attacks the message of Allah with a contrary argument? That is forgery, even though such a person has been invited to find a way to the straight path through the din of Islam. Allah will not guide those who are wrongdoers. These are people who want to use their mouth to extinguish the light of Allah, but whether they like it or not, Allah will make sure that his light shines forever. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, let's not get carried away. Let's not go into provocation. Let's not go into destruction of lives and property just because somebody is burning the Quran. No, it's not worth it for us to go into that. At the very least, therefore, we make dua against them. Pray for them. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them to the straight path. Those who are amenable to guidance among them. And those who are not amenable to guide them, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to diminish their effort and to raise us, to raise Islam, and raise Islam to raise us. And that is the kind of dua we are going to make right now. Allahumma alaykum wa kama alakta adan ula ufa munda afuma abuka. Allahumma abzihin akuda wa bila. Allahumma la tazidi zwali meena ila tabara. Allahumma atmisi alamu wa alihi wa jidu ala kulubihin fala yuminu. Hata ya rawli azaba li alim. Allahumma aiza islama wal muslimin. Wa azila shirika wal mushriki wa damira daaka wa daadin. Allahumma aleka bi zwali meen wa muayidi zwali meen. Allahumma aleka bi zwali meen wa muayidi zwali meen. Ya azizu ya gafa ya rabban alamin. Zara fatana fa manza lezi yo zilna. Wa iza zaltana fa manza lezi yo fauna. Ya ilana jalna fa ukadayna. Wa usadina wa usamayna. Kulun biram dika ya rama rahimin. Allahumma ina najaluka fi nuhurihim. Wa na'uzu bika min shururihim. Allahumma ina najaluka fi nuhurihim. Wa na'uzu bika min shururihim. Allahumma ina najaluka fi nuhurihim. Wa na'uzu bika min shururihim. Allahumma ajan ke da da ina wa usadina wa usama ina fi tadlin wa rasli alayhi tira ma ababin tarmihi bi hijarati min sijin fajalihun kasifin maqun Allahumma ajan kalmata da ina wa usadina wa usama ina asufula wa kalmatu laihi al-uliya ya azizu ya gafa ya rabban halamin la hawla wa la kuwata illa billahi li alayhi li azim سبحان ربي كرب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم آمين. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, sit down in your home and call upon Allah to protect us as Muslims and protect the Deen of Islam. Allah will definitely protect His religion, and Allah subhanahu wa taala will protect the Muslim. And Allah has promised. In Nawali Allah Ulezi, Nazalan Kita Aba, Uwa Yata Wala, Swali. Surely Allah is the one who has revealed this book. And He is the protector of those who are righteous. He has to ask Banu Allah to protect all of us. Abana Atina Fidun, Ya Hassan Aukina, Ya Kabati Hassan Aukina, Ya Abana. Subhanahu Allah, Ya Ubi Amdi, Subhanahu Allah, Ya Ubi Amdi. Mashad Allah, Ya Ilaha, Ya Ilaha, Ya Ilaha, Ya Ilaha, Ya Ilaha, Ya Ilaha, Ya